Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, I'm going to tell you why this is my perfect book. Now, we talk about books, a lot on Booktube, <laughs> unsurprisingly, that's kind of what it's for. Um, I think we tend to focus on two things. Um, and I want to talk today about the third thing, which is completely ephemeral, but it is something I've become slightly obsessed with. Um, and I may be weird in that, so do let me know in the comments if you think I'm just being really weird. Um, or if you, if you agree with me that this third thing can be important. Okay, so the things we normally talk about on Booktube then are, A, what's in the book? Yeah, clearly that's the most important part of any book is the words that are inside it. And I've said before on the channel that I don't really consider myself a collector because I buy books to read them rather than to own them, if that makes sense. Um, so I've got loads of books, um, but I've bought all of those books with the intention of reading them at some point. And, and I certainly am not someone who tends to buy like multiple copies of or multiple editions of the same book. Um, so the words inside the book is definitely the most important part of any book. The other thing we talk about a lot is the covers. Um, and, you know, obviously in Garb August we've been talking about trashy covers. Um, this is definitely a trashy cover. It's a rather wonderful one, I think. There's a lot going on here. Um, but, yeah, we talk about covers a lot. Um, and, you know, things like Instagram. So, you know, there's a big book community on Instagram. Clearly, Instagram is a, you know, a photo-based uh, service. So... A lot of the discussion on Instagram is actually about the covers of books rather than what's in the books, which I'm not sure, not sure how I feel about that. But anyway, um, so yes, we talk a lot, a lot about the words and we talk a lot about the covers. Um, but the third aspect of books is their physical presence in other ways and, and particularly the way they are put together and formatted. Um, and that's what I want to talk about today. And I'm really keen to hear what other people think about this and for other booktubers and, and you know, subscribers in the comments to say, um, you know, what factors make up your perfect book. So this for me, um, this book is perfect in terms of there are seven characteristic, physical characteristics of books outside the covers and, and the words inside the book, um, which if all seven of them come together, which they do in this book, that for me makes a perfect book. So let me talk about what those what those seven things are. So the first one is the physical size of the book. So the width and the height. Um, so I love mass market paperback size books. I really don't like the bigger um, style of book. And I don't even know, I think of trade paperback as being um, like hardcover size. Um, but there's this other size, isn't there, which is kind of in between. I really don't like that size of book. And, and sadly, that seems to be the main size of paperbacks nowadays. Um, so yeah, mass market, tick. Has to be mass market for me for it to be a perfect book. Um, the second thing is, and, and it has to be a paperback as well. So I don't particularly enjoy reading hardcovers. I find them a bit too big and a bit too cumbersome. And it's too difficult to carry around. And that's the other um, the other physical attribute in terms of size is the thickness so i think the perfect thickness for a book is about this this is this book is 178 pages i can go up to 250 pages ish and it still be okay but the crucial thing is does it fit in my pocket so this book will fit very comfortable in the back pocket of my jeans or even the front pocket um, because it's it's mass market size and it's slim so again perfect Perfect, because I like to have a book with me wherever I go. Okay, so that's two physical things. Okay, the first, uh, so the third thing then is a for, is definitely a formatting thing, and that's page numbers. Um, so I'm kind of obsessed in a weird way with numbers, and one of the things that I like in my book is I like the book to start on page one. So this book, chapter one, starts on page one. None of this nonsense where. You, where you don't have numbers on these preceding pages, but they effectively are numbered because the book starts on page 11 or whatever. Um, so I like the book proper to start on page one. I don't mind if, if the book's got like a foreword or something like that. I don't mind if the foreword is numbered, but it needs to be numbered in Roman numerals. 
So the actual book still starts on page one. Okay, so this book starts on page one. Perfect. Okay, so that's number three. Um, number four, again, is very much a formatting thing, which is about how the chapters are laid out. So I like a proper break between chapters. So I like chapter two to start, oh, here we go, chapter three to, to start on a new page. So if you see here, chapter two finishes midway or two thirds of the way down the page. Chapter three starts on a new page. I hate it when chapter three, you know, if chapter three was starting here, that would just annoy me. Um, and equally, I prefer this format where it just starts on the next page to it always starting on the left. So that feels like a bit too much of a waste of pages to me um, if you end up with a blank page sometimes between chapters. And it's inconsistent as well because sometimes you have a blank page in between, sometimes you don't. Okay, so that's number four. Um, number five then is where the pages are numbered. So I like my pages to be numbered in the middle at the bottom <laughs> because then you always get a number on every page. If they're, if they're numbered up here, then if it's a chapter start, you don't get a number on the page, which I find a little bit annoying. Um, so I like to always be able to see what page I'm on. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> maybe I'm weird. Um, so yes, so middle um, and at the bottom. Um, the next thing is then, again, a formatting thing. So it's just to do with the margins. So I like Goldilocks margins, not too big, not too small. So these for me are Goldilocks margins because you can easily read um, all the words without completely having to break the book open. So sometimes you get very poorly formatted books where the words on the page run right into the seam. Um, and that's just awful because you really have to break the book open in order to read it. But equally, this book doesn't waste space. It doesn't feel like those margins are too big. They're big enough to serve the purpose of making sure the text is readable, but they don't waste any room. Um, so yes, margins is number six. And then the final one, number seven, is I like my books to have a little bit extra at the end. <laughs> So I like my books to have adverts for other books at the end, because if you're like reading a book and I don't know, you've got to the end of a chapter and you just want to flip through and, and look at something different, you can do that. Um, it's also interesting to see other books by the same author and have it, not just a list of them at the front, but actually have a bit of a, a bit more information about them. Um, and I love ones like this where you could have ordered the book um, you could have, you know, you could have sent this off and ordered copies of the book. I don't know why, but I really like that. It makes me kind of nostalgic, I think, for a, sim a simpler age. I always wonder, because these things never have any sort of time limitation on them. I always wonder what would happen if, if I cut one of these coupons out and sent it off now. Um, would I get the book? I suspect not. Um, but it is interesting because they never stipulate an end date to it. And the other thing I think is really interesting about this is they're little time capsules. So books, physical books, exist at a certain moment in time when they were printed. Um, obviously, the words in the books are, you know, if not eternal, then certainly longer lasting than, than a, a moment in time. Um, but I love looking at what books were available at the same time as this book and just seeing, you know, what was popular back then, what sort of books were the publishers, you know, marketing? How were they, how were they describing books? How were they grouping books? So, um, you know, what sort of genres were they um, collecting the books and these lists into? Um, so, yeah, I love to have a little bit extra at the end so I can just read about what other books were available at the time. So those are my seven, my, my seven things. And this book does all of them brilliantly. So this, for me, is a perfect book. So hopefully you've enjoyed that uh, perhaps slightly strange discussion. Um, I'd love to see other booktubers show their perfect books. And I'd love to hear from commenters, um, you know, what are the factors that make up your perfect book? Do you agree with me that mass market is the best size? Um, and do you, do you like to have a little bit at the end um, to, to let you know what else was going on in publishing at the time the book came out? Um, so yeah, do let me know what you think. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.